Hey YouTube, Poops Lag here, and this is Turbo Fat, an open source puzzle game of making it in Godot. Source code is linked below if you want to check it out. And this month I was adding this new Night Onion monster who comes out, turns the whole play field dark, stars come out, uh, all these little complicated visual effects happen, so it's the most complicated monster I've added to the game so far, but I'm excited to show you how I did it. And I also did a little bit of frog finder work we'll get to at the end, so hope you'll stick around and see what I did. So first I drew a little mock-up of how I wanted this all to look when I was done. I wanted the whole play field to look like it was at night with like these stars in the sky and stuff like that, a little onion floating up, and he's got these tentacles like an octopus. And most importantly for gameplay, all the pieces are the same color, and the play field, you can only see the tops because the shadows cover up the holes in the play field, so you have to sort of remember where all those holes are. So the first approach I thought of for implementing this night mode is to have all the different places that need to change, like the next queue, have code in them saying, if it's night mode, render me differently. But the approach I went with instead is to have a separate component, which just always renders night mode and it like just goes over top of it and covers the other one up and copies all of its state. And the reason I like this approach better is if I eventually have like 20 or 30 of these crazy visual effects, which I, which I might, then rather than having one giant behemoth of like 20 or 30 if statements, I have 20 or 30 little tiny things that are also modular and I can just pull them out and be like, I don't want that feature in here anymore. So I think this approach is much better. So when I first started coding up the logic for the play field to have these shadowy areas that get covered up by pieces, it looked pretty ugly because you would like drop a piece in a place and it would cover stuff up and uh, all the shadows would go in and then like it would clear a line maybe and then it would all like blink back on. So there's like it was just very flickery and blinky and, and ugly. So I experimented with having like an animation where when you covered it up it would like gradually fill in areas but that was almost more distracting and after I spent like an hour or so playing with these different like parameters I was like I just I just liked it blinking in better. So I found a way to deal with the flickering problem and I'm, I'm happy with how it looks now. So when I shared these mockups with the TurboFat Discord, this user Vitalash suggested, why not just make the whole play area dark? That looks better to me. And I conceded, okay, well, you're kind of right, but how the heck do I code this? I could just have like a layer which goes on top of everything and applies a gradient map to keep the lights light and the other parts darker. But um, it might be hard to sort of tweak those parameters to get them exactly right. And I don't want it to have to fight with things like the touchscreen controls and the settings menu over who gets to be on top of everything. I'd rather have a different approach. And the approach I came up with was node groups to say, if you want to be dark blue at night, you can assign yourself like night mode dark. And if you want to be visible or invisible or light blue or thing, there's, there's different groups for each one. And it'll even handle things like transitions. So I have this code just spiders out and goes to all these node groups, but it'll also have like a little tween, which says, oh, we're like 50% of the way to dark mode. So just make yourself a little bit blue. And so all the animation code is even handled in pretty much one place. It's very clean. I love it. Uh, I thought about using metadata instead of node groups to just say I have a night mode and set me to this color of blue or something using metadata, but metadata is not that well supported in the Godot editor yet. And I just wanted something I could tab over and, and enter really easily. So I wanted this huge sky full of stars, and I initially mocked this up with little pinhole stars, but I went with these big cartoony ones instead, which sort of swoosh across the screen. But when I first implemented this, I noticed like they don't initially swoosh at night, they sort of like crunch, and then they come over. Like there's a lot of lag. And I looked online and found that there's a concept of particle materials needing to be compiled the first time they're shown on screen. That can cause games to lag. And there's fixes and workarounds, but when I coded them all, it didn't do anything. So I was like, what's really the problem? And I figured it out. It's that I was rendering these stars on a line and then having them slowly orbit over the sky. But that meant in order to have a sky full of stars, I had to have them pre-processed for like a minute or two because they're that slow. And that's what was causing the problem. Pre-processing particles for like a minute, like, yeah, it takes a few frames to do. So that's a bad idea. A better idea is instead of generating these stars in a line and slowly sweeping them across the screen, you can just generate particles in like a ring. That's one of the four or five shapes Godot supports out of the box. So it was an easy fix. So I wanted this little onion monster to control when it becomes nighttime. He would pop out of the ground and do a weird little onion dance, and then launch himself in the sky, hang out there for a little while with his octopus tentacles, and then get stunned, and then plummet back to the ground, sink into the dirt, and dance again. So the idea of having all these different states, you know, I started coding this and saying, okay, when it becomes daytime, play this animation, play this sound, emit these particles, and then when it becomes nighttime, you know, first launch yourself, wait, wait a little while, and then become, and I was like, this all sounds kind of familiar. And indeed, I did a little research and found out, yeah, Godot's animation tree, I think does exactly this. So let's just leverage that. I've never used it before, but it's a good time to learn. So animation trees were rough to learn. The first problem is if you're ever editing an animation tree and like tweaking these auto advanced conditions and toggling these parameters, 90% of the time Godot just 
keeps doing what it was doing before, ignores your changes, and then when you reload your project, it reverts everything. And I couldn't figure this out for like a day. I was like, I'm fiddling with these parameters. It looks like it's doing the same thing. What am I doing wrong? You're not doing anything wrong. Godot's just broken. Save and reload and keep doing that, and eventually it'll kind of work a little. Man, that was a rough day. The other half of this problem was I was just uh, not using these state machines correctly. I was thinking travel would work a certain way where I would say like, I'm in this ground state. I want to transition to the floating in the sky state once this auto advanced condition is set to true, once it's like all the way in the sky, for example. So I would call travel thinking like, maybe it'll wait there. It doesn't wait. The way travel works is if it can't find a path to the target state, it just like transitions instantly and doesn't even use your, your like transition stuff. So that's just how travel works. It makes sense. I watched a video by David Otrua of him just creating one of these state trees from scratch and hooking all this stuff up and, and playing with it in the editor. I was like, that's how it's supposed to work. That makes sense. So now I just handle transitions using um, advanced conditions and it'll just transition around and, and it's much better. So thank you, David Ochoa. Really cool video. So with all that coding out of the way, I got to make some fun levels. The sweet spot for the day-night cycle mechanic felt like when night lasted about eight or nine pieces, because that's long enough where you'll probably forget some of what's going on, but short enough where you can sort of play around and be like, I remember what's over here. Let me just hang out until it's daytime again. I did make like a permanent night level, but that's just so punishing and pretty difficult. I don't think that's for everyone. I also added a troll level where like it looks like there's a box down here at the start of the level, but as you play, you learn like, haha, I tricked you, it's not a box. Um, and then a little mole thing where at night a bunch of moles come out and they dig up treats, and then during the day the moles go away. And that's, I think, cool because like at night it's exciting and you're getting a lot of bonuses. Maybe you don't mind that it's, it's a little bit harder. So on to Frog Finder. About a year and a half ago, I released the Game Jam version of this game. And you would solve a few puzzles, and if you did a good enough job, the frogs would come out and hug your hand out of like thankfulness and stuff. And then I realized, though, in a full-length game, if they're hugging your hand every three minutes, it'll get boring. So let's mix it up a little, and I added a second intermission, sort of like Pango and Kirby, where when you beat enough levels, they'll come out and like dance and look adorable. So I drew four little animations, and then I also I added a few running animations, too, just to mix it up, so they all have their own little personalities and how they run. I also composed a song in Bosca Kyol that they would dance to and choreographed like, okay, we'll do a move for this many seconds, a move for this many seconds, and then pose a few times at the end. Uh, but I did find that the animation and the music could fall out of sync. It was like not common, but if your computer was busy for a second, or if you were dragging the window or maximizing while they ran out, like, yeah, it could fall out of sync. So the workaround I came up with was I would have this thread which would just check every every few fractions of a second it'll say like wait where's the music and where's the animation and if they're too far out of sync it'll it'll catch the animation up and it works great so one of the frogs dance in unison so i came up with a bunch of shapes that they could dance in like a triangle shape or just a big line or two little groups or a star or whatever and i put those in json and then it'll just pick an arrangement whenever it needs frogs to dance and as far as how they communicate the steps, this is cute, but there's like a lead frog who runs out and tells all the steps to all the other frogs and tells them when to start. It's just like a cute thematic way to organize my code that also happened to be very convenient. As far as how many frogs come out, at the beginning it's always one, and then it'll gradually sort of ramp up in a wavy shape that I thought was fun because like it does gradually get bigger, but not all at once. It's not like it just goes from one to ten. And, and hopefully we'll get up to 10 frogs by the end of like the 10 hour marker so that I'm aiming for the game to be when it should, you know, when the player should be done with it. So that's it for February. We added this big flashy level gimmick, which is everything I dreamt it could be. It just, I, I love how it looks. Next month, um, Godot 4 just released and I would love to upgrade to it. It fixes a lot of things like the whole thing in the game right now where like you have these translucent shadows, which have this ugly dark stripe. Godot 4 just fixes that, so I have to upgrade eventually, but first, I know that's going to break a lot of stuff. So I want to knock out this last level gimmick to finish off the Pokey Desert area. And it's going to be this cute little monster, and he's going to help you out this time. It's not going to be as annoying as the onion. Anyway, if you want to join our Discord, we uh, we accept like monster suggestions. If you want to add your own cute monster to the game, and I'll put it in. Or just get feedback, like I didn't mention it, but when it becomes night, the music all muffles. And that was just something a, a guy in the Discord just suggested, where it was like, what if when it was nighttime, it sounded like the music was far away, like a, like a dance party when you're upstairs. And I was like, that's a cool idea. So I put it in. That could be you. Anyways, so I guess I'll see you guys next month. Thanks so much for watching, and uh, I hope you try out the game. <laughs>